Everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School checking in with 88.9A, 99%. We checked in with them last year and once again having a great run this season. Uh, finalists at Lost Bowl and Excellence Awards. You're already qualified for Worlds once again, so congratulations on that. Of course, looking forward to seeing them there. But let's focus on this year's robot and what they have to bring. We'll be talking about a lot of different aspects of this as we go through. Overall packaging is very good on this robot. Uh, but we'll be covering a couple of key attributes, of course, from their intake, uh, modifications to the Lady Brown that they're making as well, and maybe talking about some of the different sensors on this robot. Let's learn about 99% coming up here once again on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Jeremy, let's talk about the drivetrain on this robot. Flip it over and tell me more about it. We'll be working our way through the intake then. All right, so here we have a six motor, 600 RPM drive. It's super fast. It's on 2.75 inch wheels. We want, to be, we want it to be fast so we can rush those corners. Um, we also designed this drivetrain to have a lot of tolerance. We found that at Wave uh, WPI, uh, the, phase were, the fields were really bumpy and our robot with uh, low C channels often got stuck. So we switched these to these cross spaces that have part bits cut out so we can f make them flush, almost completely flush with the, the C channels of the drive chain. This helps with going over uh, many different kinds of fields very uh, very smoothly. I want to talk about real quick your decision to go all omnis from like a, a des design choice and strategy on the field as well too. I mean, you guys are obviously really quick, but you do slide around a little bit too. Do you have any concerns about defense being played against you or anything like that? Um, really, uh, probably not that, not so far, because uh, our robot's just so fast, we can just run away from defense. Uh, for the corners, c since we're against the wall, like we're in the corner area, uh, pushing us from the side doesn't really do anything because we're just going into the corner, the walls. What, what about from like wall stakes? So, you know, obviously a lot of defense being played against wall stake teams on that. Like, how are you uh, trying to either overcome or compensate for that? Uh, so, a lot of it is from driver practice, but another, uh, also uh, we have this aligner here. So we can just run into the wall stake extremely quickly and uh, it automatically aligns us and then we can just use our extremely fast Lady Brown mech to load onto the wall stake. Yeah, you guys have definitely been one of the quickest robots out there, especially here at Riverbots as well too. Uh, anything else for the intake you want to add into this too? So we run a regular hook intake. Uh, we have, I guess, uh, one pre-roller and then it transfers directly to the hooks. Um, and then it goes into our mobile goal mechanism. Very quick overall. Speaking about other quick things, let's talk about the mobile goal clamp that you have in your robot. Charles, can we talk more about that? And then that Lady Brown mech, I'd love to hear about some modifications you made to it. Yeah, so with this bot, we decided to go as light as possible, as fast as possible. So this bot is only around 12 pounds. Sure. And if you see here, we only have what? About nine, eight to nine inches of space. So that's really not a lot of, lot of leverage for our mobile goal clamp to grab onto that pole. So we decided at the for this bot, we decided to run a locking clamp. This is just because with a normal clamp we wouldn't be able, we wouldn't we were not getting enough leverage on this on the goal. So uh, when we had a full stake and we were spinning around, the goal would fall flat against the ground. So now we can push on it, nothing happens, we can pull up on it, nothing happens. And yeah. Also, we have this lady brown here. If you notice, it's quite short. And this is just so we can do 360s in, well, our Lady Brown can go full uh, full 360. And this way, when we rush for those opponent positive corners, we can try and steal those goals without using our back clamp. So you guys have some meta elements on your robot, obviously, right? How do you think the meta is going to change on it? As you guys are looking at future designs on your robot, do you, do you see anything maybe changing from that aspect? Really, I think this bot is honestly really competitive. And I think we could go pretty late season to it, um, at least until regionals, yeah. And then also, one more thing with our Lady Brown is, we're running direct one-to-one, -one. well, no gear ratio, we're just running direct from the motor, and this is 100 RPM, and at Wave, we were running 66 RPM, but we found that 100 RPM had enough torque, and this it was also faster, so you mentioned defense on the wall stakes, and one more thing is our Lady Brown's faster than other teams, so, 
that means we can score those rings and be out of there faster, which runs away from that defense. Yeah, you guys have been doing a great job with that, no doubt, uh, as you go through on here. As we talk about some of the different uh, sensors on your robot as well, too, Ryan, you're going to start out covering a few of those. I know we're going to pass it over to Peter to kind of wrap up on that, too. Yeah, so most of our sensors on this robot um, contribute to our odometry. And that's because odometry has one major flaw is of when the when you run odometry for over an like, extended period of time, the errors will stack up. And when these errors stack up, your autonomous will become less consistent and less accurate over time. So in order to combat this, we have these four sensors on our robot right here, here, and here, right there. And what these sensors do is essentially, essentially um, track the distance between the robot and the wall. And so you try to guess where the robot is in the field. Peter will go in more detail about this later. Something I want to ask you too with, with that, we're starting to see our teams utilize uh, cameras and maybe some other AI functions, stuff like that for localization. Has your team looked at doing anything like that? Um, we haven't really looked into that, that yet, but that is a potentially good idea. So can't wait to see what that is. What are parts of the uh, sensors you want to talk about, Peter, on your robot? Uh, yeah, so if it, we've already mentioned the um, distance sensors that we've mentioned on our robot that we use for localization, um, and they supplement our odometry routine in order to account for any drift that might occur um, during our both our match auton and skills runs. Um, and then one thing that we use for the distance sensors is that, uh, well, like contrast with previous years, is that um, last year we had to specifically turn, like drive up to walls, and then manually code a reset, look at this wall, and then. Um, like measure the distance. Um, I think one thing that we sort of, well, it's that we sort of came up with is um, sort of an uh, is an algorithm that runs parallel to our uh, main autonomous routine, uh, runs a separate task, and then it will look at all distance sensors, estimate what their lines of sight should look like. Are there any game elements in the way? Do we think there are going to be game elements um, in the way? And then do the readings make sense? Like if an Among Us falls on the field and blocks the sensor reading, it'll hopefully detect that and realize that that is not a good reading. We should not be using that and it'll throw it out. Otherwise, if it passes all the checks, we'll just toss into our DOM routine uh, in order to uh, account for any drift that might, uh, might have accumulated. And uh, that's been working pretty well so far. Well, 99%, I mean, you guys have been really rising through the ranks as we're filming this, so definitely going to be a deep run, I think, once again for your team. So I wish you best of luck in that as well, too, as you continue to climb through the ranks. Good luck here at Riverbots. Of course, as well, we'll see you at Worlds, so we can't wait to check back in with you there as well, too. So good luck, and thanks a lot for telling us more about this current iteration that you have. Appreciate it, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected.